Hey there! In today's episode, we're going to be looking at a mod called Kerbal Alarm Clock. In the simplest terms, Kerbal Alarm Clock allows you to set up reminder alarms for various events that happen in the game, like arriving at a maneuver node or changing sphere of influence. Once you start having multiple missions going on at the same time, this mod really starts to shine, because it makes sure you don't miss those key events when your focus is elsewhere on another ship or mission. Kerbal Alarm Clock is quite customizable and has several options you can tailor to suit your needs. We'll go through those in a bit of detail to show you how to get the most out of this great little mod. But first, let's do our install with CCAN. Alright guys, with CCAN open, let's go ahead and search for Kerbal Alarm Clock by using the filter on Alarm. And there you see Kerbal Alarm Clock. Check Relationships tab quickly for Dependencies. Recommendations, conflicts, there's none. So we are good to go. Let's do an install. And it looks like we are good. Now let's go have a look in game. As we arrive in the KSC, you'll notice the new Kerbal Alarm Clock icon in the toolbar. But before we select it to open up the main window, I wanted to point out that the icon itself provides a high level status based on its color. When the icon is gray, as it is now, that means there are no future alarms set. Green means you do have alarms set and pending. Yellow indicates Kerbal Alarm Clock is automatically taking you out of warp. And lastly, the icon will turn red if an alarm activates which you had set to pause the game. Opening the alarm clock window will light up the icon but it won't affect the color status. The other thing to note while we're in the KSC is that Kerbal Alarm Clock is location sensitive. In other words, since we're not currently flying a ship, you can't add ship-based alarms such as maneuver or orbital nodes. The only alarms you can add in the KSC are raw time, transfer window, and contract based. So in the main alarm clock window, you have a few feature buttons along the top. Then your alarm list, of course, right now we have no alarms set, so this list is empty. But if we quickly add a couple dummy alarms, you see the list grows and expands the window. This will continue until we hit the default max of 10, and then a scroll bar will be added to prevent the window from getting too big. There's also a minimize maximize button to switch between the full list and the next alarm pending. Finally, at the bottom of the window, we have a time display. Now if you click on the words current time, it'll bring up a real time clock and provide a button for adding an alarm based on real time. This is a handy feature. Okay, the next button over in the main window is the settings button, and this opens a side window with various tabs to adjust settings, and the first tab we'll look at is general. So the first section of this tab is called plugin styles. This is for visual adjustments only, so I'm going to let you discover those for yourselves. Next is the plugin preferences where you set things like the max alarm list size, hide when paused, tool tips, halt warp if you manually adjust the throttle, and time format. Next up we have safety options, and I'm going to make a recommendation here. I want you guys to have a smooth and intuitive experience with Kerbal Alarm Clock, so I'm going to get you to turn off the two ship jump options. Well this is a nice feature which saves a couple most clicks and maybe even a trip to the tracking station it does add a layer of complexity through its custom save game management and its less intuitive alarm notifications. So for now, let's continue without ship jump. And turning off ship jump means the next section, save file backups, is basically irrelevant. Lastly on this tab we have a couple options I never change. They control how often it checks for alarms and other actions as well as how it handles warp transitions. And that's it for the general tab. The next tab is specifics and it's here we set up the default behavior of alarms by selecting the type from the drop-down. This panel of settings you see now is something that will repeat over and over throughout the settings as well as the add alarm feature, so let's take a minute to go over it. First we have the position we want the alarm notification to appear at. Next we have a set of actions which will occur when an alarm activates, and we need to choose which of those actions we want. There's a choice of what to do if you're in time acceleration when the alarm goes off nothing, kill the warp, or pause the game. Then there's notification options. Turn off messages, turn messages on, 
or only give messages if the alarm is for a vessel other than your current vessel. Next you can choose to add audio alerts to the alarm and finally whether you want to delete the alarm once it's executed. I always set delete alarms once done. Lastly there's a margin setting. This determines how much time in advance of the actual event the alarm will trigger giving you time to prepare for the event itself. As I said we're gonna see this group of alarm behavior settings many times so once you understand most of these are just repetition it won't seem so complicated. So let's go through the alarms in the drop down starting with maneuver nodes. At the bottom of the tab you see the same alarm settings we just went over. These are associated with creating maneuver nodes with the quick add button. There's also a burn margin setting. This will provide extra margin associated with how long of an engine burn is required by the maneuver. So if you have a 3 minute default margin and the maneuver node requires a 20 second burn, this half burn setting will result in a 3 minute and 10 second alarm margin. The setting further up the tab is for automatically setting alarms on maneuver nodes as you create them. Personally I always select this. You'll notice once you do there's another option for auto deleting these alarms if the node is deleted. I also use this. Next you'll have a threshold to prevent auto creation if you're already within a defined proximity to the node that you're setting up. And then below that is your standard group of alarm settings. And as I said, I always delete when done. The next alarm type in the drop down is sphere of influence. Where you have your quick alarm settings at the bottom and above that are the auto settings for detect and add as well as auto recalc. I typically select both of these as well as the delete when done setting. Back to the drop down we have the contract alarms with two independent configurations available for active contracts and offered contracts. The next alarm type we have are warp to alarms and all the settings under this section are pretty self explanatory I think. Finally we have the other alarms and this has some settings for crew, orbital and transfer alarms. I typically don't change any settings here. Before we move on you might have noticed the changes we made to these specific settings have resulted in some new icons showing up in the main window. These indicate that alarms are automatically set for planetary transfers, SOI changes and maneuver nodes. The next setting tab is audio. This allows us to configure the audio alerts we can add to our various alarms. You can also test the various audio options by selecting a sound from the drop down and clicking the test sound button. The next setting tab is visibility and here you configure the location of the Kerbal alarm clock window in the various scenes where it's available. You'll note that with the exception of the editors the alarm clock isn't available in any of the facilities where the game clock is not running. The calendar is the next tab over and here we have a cool little feature that allows you to run an earth calendar so you can do things like try to recreate your favorite space program from our own history. You do this by selecting earth calendar from the drop down and then whatever starting date you want. You can also put the calendar switcher in the alarm clock main window if you'd like. The last settings tab is the about tab and in here we have the version checker settings, documentation links and an importer tool if you need to move alarms from the previous version. Alright guys well I think we've spent enough time digging through the various option settings. Let's go board a vessel and see how these alarms actually work. Okay, so since we've already set up Kerbal Alarm Clock with auto alarms for Maneuver and Sphere of Influence nodes, we can now show both of these by having a ship do a transfer maneuver to the moon. But before we do that, let's have a quick look at manually adding other types of alarms. When you hit the Add button, you can see all the types of alarms available to you in flight mode. This seems like a lot to take in at first, but remember, these are all just variations of the same behavior settings we've already seen a couple times. So there's nothing new or scary here. We should look at a couple of these which are affected by targets though. These are the ascending descending and closest approach. So if we select the ascending descending tab you'll notice that if you don't have a target set it'll use the equatorial node of the planet whose sphere of influence you're in. Now if we switch to map mode and select a target you can see it now updates the alarm with the target vessel. Now let's look at the closest approach tab and you can see the extra settings here in the middle. 
With a ship target set like we have now, it's going to let you search up to 20 orbits for the closest approach to set an alarm for. If you switch to target distance, you can now set an alarm on an absolute distance value based on either your target vessel or the planet you're near. And switching to Kerbin also allows you to alarm at the edge of the atmosphere, as it will do for any atmospheric body. Okay, now that you know how to manually add alarms, let's close the alarm clock windows, unset this target, and create a maneuver for the moon. Just want to check something here real quick. Okay, so we need a maneuver node for the moon. Try somewhere over here. See if we can get an interception. There we go. Perfect, that's good enough. That gives us a maneuver node as well as a sphere of influence change. Let me just push it out a little bit more. And that is, uh, that's great for demonstration purposes here. The other thing you'll notice is, as I mentioned earlier, now the icon is green, and that indicates we have a future alarm pending. And there you can see our maneuver node that was automatically set. So what we're going to do is, I'm going to switch to another vessel while we wait for us to come almost all the way around this orbit here so we'll simulate that we are doing something we are actually processing science in this station as we speak but let's assume we had some experiments to run some EVAs to do we're busy doing other stuff over here. I'm going to time accelerate us so we don't have to wait so long for the alarm to go off. And as we approach alarm time, you'll see the yellow indicator telling us that it's de-warping us in advance of the alarm. And there is the alarm. So it's for our Moon Observer Vessel is a maneuver node and it's going to delete on close. So we just need to switch back to our other vessel. And prepare ourselves for the maneuver node. You can see it gave us the three minute margin, which we're now down to two minutes and 30 seconds and it doesn't have an estimated burn at the moment so what I better do is a quick burn there you go so that gives us the 1 minute and 27 seconds now we want to split that half and half on each side so we will we'll start our burn at approximately 45 seconds I'm just going to uh, bump us forward a little bit here with uh, with warp. And here we go. So we can watch our orbital path change and approach our target orbital path and I may speed this up as well just so that you don't have to watch for so long So as you guys can see, now that that maneuver node is complete, the sphere of influence alarm has been automatically set. Now if you're running a single mission, you might ask, why not just stay here in map mode and use time acceleration to get to each of these nodes directly? 
Well, the truth is, you don't need alarm clock in that scenario. But now consider you're running multiple missions at the same time, and you're setting up a mining base on Minmus while your first Duna probe is headed towards the Red Planet. You don't want to lose those weeks of mining time while you watch your probe on Duna approach, and you sure don't want to miss your orbital insertion burn at Duna while you're fiddling around with your drillomatic. This is where Kerbal Alarm Clock becomes essential, and trust me, it'll save entire missions from embarrassing failure when you miss maneuver nodes and don't have the Delta V to compensate. Not that I've done that, but I've heard stories. And here we are in the Moon's Sphere of Influence, where we could do another maneuver node to establish an orbit or fly by on the way back to Kerbin. Alright guys, well that pretty much covers the basics of Kerbal Alarm Clock. This is another great mod with a ton of capability, but at the same time it's easy to use and provides functionality that's hard to live without once you're used to having it. This is definitely a KSP mod I recommend everyone install. So go grab Kerbal Alarm Clock for your game, and we'll see you in the next episode. Take care.